by the sports doctor, Colin McLaughlin, who's working hard this morning, getting those pictures up, answering the phones. I got them pumping over there. We're working hard too, Rob. We're sitting down. <laughs> I know, but we got to go quick. We're sitting down. We're, we're used to going a little slower. We're in a temperature-controlled room sitting down. <laughs> Our segment here brought to you by Hagerstown Ford, also by the Wagner Law Firm, West Virginia's premier DUI defense attorneys, also by elder care attorney Danny Staggers in Martinsburg. Call him at 304-267-3915. And by WVU Medicine, Berkeley Medical Center, Jefferson Medical Center. In studio with the Admiral, Bill Stubblefield, two-star. You know, democracy is wonderful. Whether you agree with the results or not, it's still wonderful. And Maria Lawrence, an all-star. It is indeed. And as I said, we have gracious winners and gracious yeah. losers this yeah. time. So we will see. And via telephone, Riley Moore, who is the new district, or I guess it would be District 2 is what it's called, Congressional Representative exactly. for West Virginia. Riley, congratulations. Rob, thank you very much. What a great day to be an American. Huh? You... you uh, I don't know. They say you're either running unopposed or running scared, but did it ever really seem to be much doubt in this race in your mind, Riley? No, no, not really. Um, you know, I think we, um, right now, I mean, almost all the ballots are in and uh, we'll end up winning by 42 points. Um, so That's pretty good. No, yeah, we felt pretty good about it. Yeah. So we're over 70% of the vote. Um, in my favor, I, I can't thank everybody enough for all the massive support throughout the second congressional district. Honor in my lifetime, so uh, to be able to be the congressman in the second congressional. So you got uh, you'll have a Republican in the White House, Republican Senate. It looks like a Republican House, and mm -hmm. uh, you'll be joining that. So a couple of things: what are some important things nationally to get through during these next four years, and uh, what's to stop Republicans from cannibalizing themselves with all this power like we've seen kind of happen at the uh, state level here in West Virginia? Well, look, I, is, in the House is yet to be decided, just to be clear. Um, it does look like we're going to retain the House, but there's some close races still out there. But I do think we'll retain the House, not by a larger um, margin than we currently have, maybe by a couple. But uh, it's still going to be slim margin in the House. Senate, on the other side, yeah, I mean, you could end up with uh, a really sizable majority over there. But, look, we got the White House. I think we're going to have the House. And we have the Senate. we got a mandate. And that mandate is President Trump's vision, who just won the Electoral College, which is going to end up being by a landslide, probably 312 Electoral College votes. And he won the popular vote. Any power, any party in power, it's got all three. You're going to lose in the midterms, particularly in the House. So I think that's something we just need to kind of keep in our mind and just go execute President Trump's agenda. That's what we need to do. First, that's first and foremost. First time Republicans have won the popular vote in several uh, elections here. Go ahead, Maria. Um, so, so then you you talked about some of the things to follow, Riley. Um, you know, the president's agenda. Is there anything in particular um, that you uh, would suggest a focus on? Well, I think as the president's talked about, I've talked about everybody, and that is secure the border, build the wall, bring back American manufacturing, putting tariffs on companies that aren't trading fairly with us. I mean, a lot of these top item agendas that president um, agenda items President Trump has been talking about now uh, for almost the last decade, uh, and a lot of us have been talking about as well. But I mean, that's kind of first and foremost. We want to reshore manufacturing, we want to rebuild uh, middle class and manufacturing in this country. We need, we're going to put tariffs on products from China and things of that nature. And uh, we are going to and the mass migration over the southern border that's been happening over the last four years under President Biden. Riley, uh, one of the things that's got some folks concerned is the, uh, the expectation that Kennedy is going to be coming in and do a major overhaul of our medical uh, approach in the, for the U.S. Any thoughts on that? Yeah. Uh, yeah, I'm excited for him to be there, um, particularly on this Make America Healthy again. And I think where he's been really interesting as of late, what he's been discussing is 
what is actually going into our food? Why are, you know, our health outcomes and uh, really life expectancy is based, obviously, on uh, your monetary uh, income. And it shouldn't be like that, right? And we've seen life expectancy dropping in certain parts of the country. And I, I'm excited to see what he comes up with in terms of food, in terms of uh, uh, vaccines and getting some more transparency and disclosure into some of those things that people have been talking about for a long time. I, I look, I'm, I think transparency, sunlight, those are the best cures for good policy. And I think that's really what we're going to start to see now and what we're talking about in terms of disclosure, in terms of the uh, items and additives that are in food and pharmaceutical products and all these other things. Those are good things. That, that is a good thing. We should know what's going in there. What about some of the climate change issues? That, those aren't going to be discussed in the next four years, Bill. <laughs> this is the Republicans uh, won, Bill. There, there's some thought They're about. They're not getting talked about. <laughs> there's some thought about NOAA, which has been one of the oh, major. Well, uh, what's the future of NOAA? Yeah, what's the future of NOAA, especially the climate change aspect of NOAA? So, yeah. Uh, yeah, I don't. I, I'm not sure what the. I haven't really heard anybody talk about Noah. Um, but uh, what I know is that this agenda is going to be a energy policy that's really about um, just powering America, and that's going to include fossil fuels. And that is wonderful for the state of West Virginia, coal, gas, oil, all that stuff. I think we're going to see nuclear. And, you know, um, President Trump has not been outright opposed to uh, certain aspects of uh, renewable energy, obviously. Um, but uh, I, I do think he, like myself and others, are opposed to uh, massive subsidies for those. Riley, I would hope with Republicans in charge of everything now, should they win the House, it looks like they will, that we can finally get somewhere on this nation's debt. And we can finally yes. make some kind of inroads into seriously discussing the future of Social Security and Medicare. We can't stay on this path we are currently on where we just ignore it. No, no, we cannot. Um, and that's where and look, this is part of the reason President Trump won. It is President Trump. But think about everybody who has been part of this coalition with him. You got Elon Musk, right? Elon Musk. And this is not like a joke. He is going to come in there and work on government efficiency. You don't think that guy can find efficiency? He just figured out how to find, uh, how to build re re reusable rockets. I think he's going to be able to find some efficiencies in the federal government where we're going to be able to find some savings. I mean, this is going to be a historic administration. And by the way, I do have to say this. This is the greatest comeback in American political history, this win last night. It is. I mean, this guy, they've tried to throw in jail. They've tried to kill him twice. He lost a presidential election in 2020. And, I mean, it, it, it's unbelievable. Well, he, he did lead an insurrection on January the 6th. So when you come from that, that low, yes, that is correct. That is the greatest comeback in, in political history because most people who lead an insurrection have a very small chance of being reelected. <laughs> well, I don't think that's an insurrection at all. Um, yeah. but, and, and the American people didn't need him. So no, they didn't, they didn't because he won the popular vote. He did better with pretty much every demographic group that you can, you can, uh, um, find a category for. And again, the first uh, Republican to win the popular vote, I think since, uh, what Bush 43, I think that's right. Cause he, he lost the popular vote to Al Gore, but I thought he won it the second time. He so, did. He won second it time. the second time. Yeah. He lost it the first time. Correct. Very good. Uh, Riley, congratulations to you once again. We appreciate your time this morning. Well, thank you so very much. And uh, congratulations to all the winners around the state. Have a great day, sir. Riley. Thank you all so much. Riley Moore, 2nd Congressional District.